When I was in high school, I had a crazy basketball coach. All right, this guy was dead set on taking these white Catholic schoolboys and turning us into, you know, a hard, tough as nails basketball team that could take on anyone. You know, he wanted us to be able to, to bang with the uh, the inner city kids, and so he he pushed us very hard. Uh, you know, he he drove us uh, with intense fervor. I remember I was even I even had like nightmares. Uh, <laughs> Of like getting getting like a, a question wrong in class, and then him like kicking open the door and being like, "That's it, underneath the basket, 19 seconds," because that was he would time us on our our suicides, um, and you know, you know, just make us run them you know constantly. So anyway, he tried to push us really hard, and uh, it didn't really work out entirely. In some ways, it did, but in a lot of ways, it actually was kind of productive. Some guys, they actually ended up performing well beneath their potential because of the stress that he put on them. You know, as soon as they would make a mistake, he'd pull them out of the game and like, you know, scream at them and, you know, that kind of thing. And the guys who couldn't handle it, you know, they got squashed down. But then it also happened on a physical level too. Sometimes he would push us like way too hard during practices during the week and we would be too beat up to perform at our best when it came to, to play a game later that week. You know, I remember walking around feeling like I was like 80 years old because my hips were so sore from like diving on the ground and and shit like that. Now, the reason that I'm telling you guys all of this is because I see many of you making the exact same mistake, all right? And this is the mistake of being too hard on yourself. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's not me. I I clearly screw everything up. You know, I'm I'm not disciplined at all. So this, this doesn't apply to me. I would say in most cases, it actually probably does. You know, there are you know, plenty of people out there who simply don't apply themselves at all. But there's a lot of guys, especially if you're watching a self-development channel, chances are you actually do care and you do try. But the problem is that you are too much of an asshole to yourself in your own head that you are the one who is actually creating all of your, you know, drive for escapism. Because here's what happens is like, if you push yourself really hard and you're just a dick to yourself and you're just telling yourself, hey, you got to do better. 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 Eventually, you're just going to want to get away from the asshole that's in your own head. You're going to be like, all right, screw this guy. I need to zone out. And this is where most guys like escapist behaviors come in. This is where they get addicted to, to porn, to video games, to drugs, to, to whatever it is, is that they're trying to uh, escape their own inner critic. And in my time as an anti-escapism coach, I've seen this like countless countless amounts of times with countless numbers of guys and I always point this out to them and they're like oh yeah you're right <laughs> but then they fight me tooth and nail on what the solution is uh, the solution is to love yourself properly and here's their their result is like here's their their argument is like well I can't just like love myself like look at all these look at this laundry list of things that I'm not good enough in all right if I just tell myself that I'm okay and I just love myself well how am I going to fix any of that how am I going to fix that? What's my motivation? If I'm just good enough, I'll just probably let it all go. And that's that's what they think, which if you actually think about it, is an absurd proposition. It's the idea that you cannot love yourself and improve at the same time. It's built upon this idea of like, oh, well, the only way I can get myself to do better is if I hate myself as like, you know, leverage, which is nuts. But this is how a lot of guys operate. And this is the only kind of self-motivation that they know. I call this a vacuous form of self-motivation. It's the idea that you lack any inherent fundamental worth inside of yourself and that you need to earn all these status points. You got to earn all these status trophies and you like, oh, I do this thing good and this thing good and this thing good and I take these little trophies and I put them in my heart and then all of a sudden I can love myself for like five minutes till they dissolve and then, you know, I need to go get more trophies. <laughs> And so this is how most guys go through life and it's a horrible way to live because you never feel good enough and you constantly need more and more and more and uh, you're just never going to know peace. So what's the alternative? What if you don't want to live like a black hole your whole life? Well, what you have to step into is what I call a radiant mentality and this is one that's focused on dignity. Dignity is the key, all right? So the radiant mentality is built upon the idea that, well, the black, let's start with the black hole. The black hole mentality is built upon this idea that your worth as a person and your status are one and the same. If your status goes up, then your worth as a person goes up. You become more lovable, all right? As your status goes down or it's threatened, well, then you become less lovable as a person, meaning you are less worthy of your own sacrifice, less worthy of the rewards of doing good things. And so the radiant mentality, it flips this. It says, hey, you've got your worth over here and you've got your status over here. They're connected, but they're different. Your inherent worth is something that's fundamental. It's given to you by God, or you just 
choose to believe that you have it because your life gets way better when you do. But you believe that you have this inherent fundamental worth that cannot go up or down for anything. It's just you, because you're a living human being, you have value, you are worth loving, which means you are worth sacrificing for, at least for yourself. You know, it doesn't make any obligations for anyone else, but it says, hey, I'm going to decide that I am always worth sacrificing for. I'm, it's always worth it for me to do what is truly best because I deserve that because I have inherent dignity, okay? Now, you start there, but then you say, all right, well, if I'm good, well, I need to get this to be reflected in my status. I need my status to reflect my goodness. And that is where your motivation comes from. It's like, oh, yeah, I see this, uh, the, all these things that I'm sucking at. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm not performing well enough at work. I, you know, I've got these bad habits. Uh, I lose my temper sometimes. And it's like you, you list off all these things where you are lacking the status that you want, all right? And that should hurt because all these things, they do not reflect that inherent perfect goodness you have there. In many ways, at odds with it. It's like, oh, I'm doing all this undignified stuff. And so what you want to do is you want to approach those things from this attitude of like, you know what? This is beneath my dignity. I am better than this rather than I'm not good enough. That's the flip, right? It's the flip between that's beneath me and I'm not good enough. And they're two different kinds of motivation, but and they both can be powerful, but one is so much more healthy. One, it makes you feel so much better, right? So it's like you can go to the gym because you feel like, oh, I'm not good enough unless I get in shape. You know, I'm just this, this fatty who's, you know, blah, 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 you know, just shitting on yourself, okay? Or you can motivate yourself to go to the gym by saying, you know what? Being an unhealthy person is beneath my dignity. To have a weak body is beneath my dignity, you know? For me, since I love myself and I'm, I'm good, I want that goodness to be reflected in my physique and physical health, all right? It leads to the same actions, more or less. I mean, sometimes uh, there'll definitely be divergences in you know where you take it, the extremes you go, all that kind of stuff. But generally, you can utilize either one of these. And most guys only know the shitty one. They only know this dark black hole sort of motivation. And that just sucks because at the end of the day, you got to learn how to love yourself. And if you learn how to love yourself properly, you're going to find your best motivation. You're going to find your best productivity. You're going to find, you know, everything that you need to be your best self because you're going to value yourself and you're going to know that you're worth the effort and you're worthy of the rewards that come of it. Now, for a lot of guys, this is a completely life changing perspective shift and it takes a fair bit of work to really internalize it. Like if you're hearing something right now and it's resonating within you it's probably gonna disappear in like five minutes when you just like go back to your, your default mode of operation, all right? So <laughs> that's just the way it goes. It takes some work because this stuff has its tendrils in literally everything that you do. And you know, maybe some of you guys who are familiar with my content and you've done this kind of work, write it down in the comments, you know, let people know, oh wow, this takes a bit of doing. And if you do, well, your life will become something entirely different. Your way that you work with yourself, the way that you feel inside of yourself will change like night and day. But it takes work. And so if you want to do that work, well, you need a structure. And that's what I created the Self Mastery Club for. And then I teach you how to journal. I teach you how to think. I, I lay out a whole course, the Reforged Man course. If you're trying to quit porn too, it basically takes all of this and like makes it at the very core of it. So, I mean, I have tools in here that can help you make this transformation if you think that this is important to you. So if so, click the link in the description, check out my Manhood Mastery training, find out more. But that's pretty much what I have for you guys today. I hope you found this useful. Ooh, yeah. See you on the next one.